Hello everyone and welcome back to Level of Detail, a podcast by the Games Development Department here at Staffordshire University. I'm David James and I'm Senior Lecturer in Games Design and I'm joined today by Sean Reeves, Senior Lecturer and Course Leader in Games Development and Hannah Walters, a Lecturer and Module Leader in 3D Games Art. In each episode we focus on different aspects of the games design and development community, the games industry and games research. Uh, last episode we took a dive into cooperative and local multiplayer games and we couldn't have upset each other too much. Sean, Hannah, because you're back. So we're doing this again, right? Let's so do it. Couldn't have been too bad. Um, today we're going to take a trip down memory lane and look back at some of the classic retro games from our, what you could call, misspent youths. Uh, to start, right, we're going to, it's not the first game, but it's the granddaddy of them all, in, in our humble opinion, <laughs> Super Mario Brothers on the NES. And we're going to be playing that on the uh, Switch, aren't we? On the, um, what's, what's it called? The arcade? The, the Nintendo yeah, arcade yeah, thing? Yeah, yeah. So, right, we're going to take it in turns this <coughs> time, aren't we? So, Hannah, you, you, do you want to get us started? Indeed, indeed. If I can figure it out. Oh, there we go. There we go. Super Mario oh. Brothers. The, what I love about Super Mario Brothers mm. um, from a design perspective is that the first level mm -hmm. of Super Mario Brothers teaches you how to play every single Super Mario Brothers game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Since, isn't it? Not just this one, but all of them. Oh, it's wonderful. Uh, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And really cleverly, pay attention to the um, the bushes mm. and the clouds. Mm. It's the same asset, but slightly different colours. Oh, yeah. Memory was like it is today, very kind of expensive. Yeah. So. Let's get back in. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Yeah, trying to squeeze as much as they can onto uh, <laughs> onto that disc. I am going to be quite uh, honest and say I actually remember this coming out in the UK. That's that's how yeah. old I am. Okay. <laughs> so Can't I, say that I, I remember it coming out honestly. <laughs> We'd never ask that. Aren't we? yeah, <laughs> we're, we're gentlemen. Yes, um, indeed. But yeah, this, this, I remember this um, when it came out, and I think from a nostalgia perspective, mm. I think it's just absolutely. It's just one of those things, and you know, I don't, why do we play nostalgic games? Reminds us of a simpler time, doesn't it? It does for me. Like this is this reminds me of Christmas when I was little. This, yeah. You know, this this came on a cartridge with duck hunt. Yes. Remember that one? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah it came on yeah. a cartridge with duck hunt, and um, I never completed. I played this so much when I was little, but never actually completed it um, until probably I was far too old. You know, like well past, well past <laughs> being little. I actually got to the end and finished it. Have, have I've you, really tried hard to hit the top. I was part. just about to say you needed a bigger run up at that. Oh. It's fine. It's fine. We live and we learn. We no, we it's learn. all good. Sean, you want to have a crack at level yeah, two? Let's, 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 yeah, let's show, show us how the boss does it. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's, this is how we do it. This is how we do it. Okay. <laughs> we need to remember the controls. Have you played this much in the past, Hannah? Mario Brothers. I've, Just I've played the newer ones. Sure. Probably. I have I have touched it once yeah, or twice. Yeah, yeah. You know, on an emulator or something. Mm -hmm. um, but not religiously. I'm not a, a seasoned veteran, as Sean probably is. He oh, is no. immediately as he throws oh, himself. Oh, wow. Oh, no. <laughs> Straight into the, the mushroom pit. Yeah. I'm not going to bother with all those. Uh, uh, um, Your practice I, isn't paying if, off. If I get this just right. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Oh. No, no. You got him. Oh, wrong way. Wrong way. Oh, no. Uh, oh, sure. Here we go. Here we go. That's <laughs> Started well. You can have another go again. You can get, <laughs> okay. you, you're getting your eye in. You're getting your eye in. It's I can, fine. I can, I can just imagine what my pals are saying there. It's a standard <laughs> no kind of. Uh, uh, but um, yeah, I mean. You didn't need that. You didn't need that anyway. You're not going to get hit, so you don't need to be Super Mario because you're going to do this without I'm, even glimpsing. I'm just going to be Mario. Unbelievable. Are you sure? I was just a. Just, just, just to hide your shame, or what I was going to say, because we were talking about quick like, cut, quick cut. Yeah, we were, talk, we were talking about retro games, weren't we? And it's like them being popular, and it obviously they are because on the Switch there's this whole sort of network and a system to play these retro games, and uh, you know that on um, that Nintendo but Online do you, thing. Do you think now, though? I mean, mm. if we look at obviously what nostalgia is, okay? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. initially a Swiss term. Okay, yeah. um, and it was obviously re remembering obviously what it was like used by. The, I up got the found at the one up look. Okay. Um, so it's, it's all about um, where the Swiss military, how they used to, um, you know, reminisce on being at home, miss home, um, and the, the term came from. There we go. Look 
particular, the term came from that. It's a Swiss term, basically. Mm. Okay. Awesome. Uh, and the, 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 the fundamentals of it is that there's a little bit of um, positive memory in there, and there's a little bit of negative memory in there. Positive mm. being you remember what it was, mm -hmm. and you have happy times of that, and the negative being that you want it now. Yeah. And it's kind of nice, you know, we play these games, and we, we play it with um, people. We remember those times playing it with our friends and family and whatnot, and it's on the sofa, and, you know, um, as you kind of went through the 80s and 90s, where we, we had these games which weren't connected to the internet, so multiplayer meant that you were sat with your pals like we are here mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. um, and you reminisce on that, you know, and that's what nostalgia in gaming is. It's that kind of that happy memory of, of that. Um, in terms of nostalgic games though, I think this is the question where I know it's quite popular I think between the younger generations now, mm -hmm. you know, of, of playing these to get a feeling of what it was like and um, maybe study the games even, even so, you know, but to get that experience of what it was like in a, as a retro gamer, right? I don't know about you, but I would not play this now from start to end completely, as in like I've done it once, I know what happens. Mm. But I'm spoilt by all the 3D graphics sure. that we've got today. Yeah, you were spoilt, and I think <laughs> the, the, the the younger generation playing coming into these games, especially the ones old enough to play the the, the kind of the 15, 18 mm. base games, they are spoilt a little bit with the quality of the, the you know. I mean, I remember a world of gaming without the internet. Yeah, you know, for sure. For um, sure. And you, you see that kind of vault, and it's a great man for, for for the games industry. Mm -hmm. um, I think nostalgically, it's um, it, it, it is nice to sit with your, with your buddies, having a having a game. And it varies as well massively, doesn't it? Like what, what like my idea of nostalgia is this, but then I heard people like like talking about like <laughs> like the early two thousands as as being people's like retro age, <laughs> and and let me tell you, well the that, average that scared me. The average <laughs> age of a, yeah the average <laughs> age of a gamer is yeah. thirty six. Yeah. Mm. Well, so there's, you know, but obviously they're not the ones that game me the most. It's probably teens, young 20s, you know, uh, early 20s. But, yeah. Oh, Get so close. There you go. Actually, yeah, to go on. If we talk, if, if we talk, yeah, because Sean and I sort of said then, this is maybe more our sort of speed from when we were young. What's, what, what's retro then to yourself? Go on, now. Well, yeah, because <laughs> the definition is going to change depending on age. I yeah. don't know which of us looks the youngest. Uh, yeah. Oh, we don't need to have that conversation. <laughs> um, but I was, because I was trying to think, the first like game that I remember playing was Dig Dug, and I can't think oh. of when that came out, because mm -hmm. um, I was having a little a little think to myself of what I would count as retro, um, and I was actually talking about it in a class with a, another fellow who I work with, and he was dis, you know, dismay at hearing what I thought, because I was like, oh, well, uh, yeah, Halo and stuff. And he was like, if it's 3D, it doesn't count as retro, <laughs> apparently. Apparently, okay, yeah, Super Mario Sunshine isn't retro. Uh, you know, what is it? Uh, the frog that crosses the road. Frogger. Frogger, Frogger, Frogger 3D 1997 isn't retro because it isn't 3 because it's 3D. Um, but would you, would you kind of, would you kind of consider, um, let's say, um, I forgot what I was going to say. Sorry. <gasps> That's an edit. What? <laughs> Sean at a loss for words. This can't be. Oh, this can't oh, be. That was it. Um, <laughs> there was, there was um, uh, I mean, yeah, there's going to be a generation soon where they're going to consider Minecraft as retro. Oh, gosh, yeah. Probably Aren't already they? do, I reckon. Yeah, yeah if you probably ask already the right do. People, you know, yeah, 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 out, yeah. Out, when did Minecraft come out? Uh, I, 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 I want to say. Let's see. I want to say 2013. Uh, but yeah. 18, 18, I was going to say that. 10 years ago, maybe. Probably should know that, but <laughs> we can be <laughs> fact checked on that. But it's 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 getting on a bit. But that will be people's. That's a significant chunk of someone's life, isn't it? You know, mm. like, I was. And when do mobile games move into retro mm. gaming mm. Mm. category? Mm. When does Angry Birds become a retro game? Absolutely. What? You know. Well. Yeah, people look fondly on Angry Birds, absolutely. I mean, that's from um, iPhone 3G, 3GS 3GS, age. yeah, 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 where you yeah, got the first so. app store, wasn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, there's a lot that we can learn from these, and we're going to look at a, some, a couple of other games in, 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 a, in a moment or two, but like, there's a lot of, that we can learn from like design mm -hmm. methodologies and stuff. 
you touched on a bit of it on with Mario, Sean, when you were talking about how it teaches you how to play the game at the very beginning. And that's like a, a, a trope, isn't it? We see that in loads of different games where like the first part is spent trying to organically teach you how to play the thing without, oh. Oh, wow. It's fine. But like, but the, the interesting way Mario does it is without sort of throwing up a load of tutorials and a load of stuff like that. Game over. Game over. Game over. Yeah. Oh, well, what we'll probably Sorry, do on that on that note is that a good time for us maybe check out. Do you want to load up? Um, shall we? Shall we? Shall, shall we skip forward a few years from Super Mario Brothers to? We'll skip Mario Two. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with Mario Two. Big fan. No. Big fan. Yeah. But yeah. like, we're going to go to Mario Three, which I know you're particularly fond of, Sean. Yes, so. I'm a huge, huge fan of uh, of Mario Three. In fact, Mario Three was um, it was one of the Mario's where I. Um, managed to complete a Panini sticker book. Mm. Uh, I, I believe it was 1991. Panini completely. I wish I still had it. I think it would be worth an absolute fortune. Yeah. Uh, no. But they, this is where they have got higher quality. Oh. Higher quality graphics. Maybe not higher quality gameplay coming from your side. So, so, I was going to say, <laughs> I was gonna say so high quality, they dazzled you. <laughs> they dazzled you to the point that you couldn't it's jump far over too the many first colours, enemy yeah. in the game. Um, but yeah, so it, it got um, higher quality uh, graphics, it got higher quality um, gameplay, and the, the map, for example. Oh gosh, he's going to run away. There we are, right? Uh, one thing I will say is that we have, um, he's got a fire, fireball, isn't he? Uh, we had uh, a, a graduate of ours um, mm. a couple of years ago, and um, in their first year module, they had to kind of, they, they get to grips with stuff like um, social media and LinkedIn and things like that, and, you know learn to understand how best to present themselves online mm -hmm. uh, and the students um, now working in a triple A studio mm -hmm. um, are we allowed to say the studios? Yes. Yeah um, Playground awesome. and um, he wrote an article all about Mario's jump. Now what he had to do was for another assignment was create Mario and what he actually did is recreated Mario 3 and it was absolutely perfect so what he'd done he'd taken his version of the game mm. he'd taken the original Mario 3 and he would wrote an article just on the physics the arc that Mario would, would take in terms of jump onion skinned it fine-tuned his code mm. got it absolutely perfect to the point where you'd even got like a Mario maker built in and this is like, he was a first year student. I mean, he was incredible. And we, um, we, yeah, we don't expect that kind of level of detail. No, DJ, awesome. yeah. um, level of detail. Oh, wow, there's the organic plug. Well done. <laughs> but, 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 it was, it, it, honestly, he'd worked so hard at it. And it was just incredible. But it was a, a complete replica of Mario 3. It was absolutely, just absolutely superb. Oh, uh, but then, inevitably, you know, he oh. went on and did his placement. Um, at Playground, and uh, then he went back there. Um, yeah, it worked really, really hard. Um, he's a graduate now, um, so hi, Scott. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant, awesome. I mean, there's a lot going on in, the, in, in these games, physics-wise. Even the original Mario, and, and to go from Mario Brothers to Mario Brothers 3, sort of like mm. in, this, in, in a matter of minutes, I don't know, um, you get to sort of appreciate, like, again, same hardware this yeah. was, same hardware, but you get to appreciate the advancements in the physics, the graphics, like, there's just so much more going on on the screen like you know absolutely well, even the fact you can move backwards in this you know one. what yeah well there you go let's go there you go mind-blowing that's <laughs> right. crazy that's but why sean was so dazzled before <laughs> yeah. yes that, that is exactly <laughs> that's exactly it. it the thing is you couldn't do these things at the time on pc mm -hmm. so the best you got on pc was you move and then when you got to near the edge of the screen the screen would move across because sure. the PC was incapable. Whilst the PC is a far superior con uh, machine now, at that time it was all about the console. It was all about the NES, and it was you know. Mm. Um, so this was just incredible. And, and believe it or not, it was actually um, the uh, John Carmack and John Ramirez at Id Software, where they developed Dangerous Dave was their kind of <laughs> little play about kind of game. Mm -hmm. And they actually managed one evening to get a PC version of Dangerous Dave mm -hmm. to run um, across the screen. 
Oh, yeah. So like this, like the screen would follow the character. Um, like you were really get into it then when you did you? Oh, oh, uh, no, Hannah just sort of beamed a shell straight back into her own face. <laughs> and I, I, I was reacting. They were really excited about what you were saying. Edge of your seat, oh, bloody hell. <laughs> But yeah, oh, it, it, that's that's what it, that's what it does. So it, but the console had this constant kind of side scrolling mm. that you you know you went with the character, but it was it wasn't until they got the dangerous Dave and so the, the guys in software mm -hmm. that managed to properly properly do it. That's awesome. And was there something with the cartridges on the Nets as well, like where they actually had a bit of hardware in them that let ah. us get better stuff? The, and the best thing about this, mm. a little bit of plug for a high score on the on Netflix, but. Um, uh, a thing about this was it was actually a British um, uh, kind of bit of, bit of British research, British ingenuity uh, mm -hmm. in there. And the well, long and short of it was these guys have been working on a, creating 3D graphics mm -hmm. for a Game Boy. Mm -hmm. And they hadn't actually got the, the true licensing to do this because you had to kind of fill out a slip, send it to Nintendo, they'd authorise it. And to get that was just virtually impossible. So they just did it anyway. Okay, um, And they they managed to get 3D working on a on a Game Boy, okay? So it took all apart, played a bit with the electrodes and so forth, right? Um, Nintendo found out about this, they pulled the guys over into, uh, into Japan, to obviously the Nintendo HQ, and they had a chat with them, and they said it was quite daunting being there to find mm. that, you know, these uh, en engineers from Nintendo were very much kind of, we want to speak to you. Yes, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And what had actually happened was they'd, should we, have, should we go with this one? These are the best ones. I love these ones. Watch this. Oh, oh that would have been so much. Relied a lot less on my. Uh, Ready? Okay, so see if we, uh, let me jump back to the story in a minute, but see if we remember. Ready? Great, Ready? Truly horrific. Say go. 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 Oh. Oh. Oh, oh did you? Choked. Choked. God. Oh, so close. So close. Anyway. So. They got pulled into the teacher's office. At Nintendo, mm -hmm. and they wanted to find out how they'd done it, right? They had a big meeting with them, they explained how they did it, and they went, okay. And they thought they were going to be taken to court. They weren't, they were given a contract and told, you now work for Nintendo. They were put into the lower departments of Nintendo, the bells of Nintendo, mm -hmm. uh, into a little room, which used to be the room where Miyamoto used to go for a cigarette, um, <laughs> and they were commissioned to work on Star Fox. Oh, oh. brilliant, yeah, fantastic. And Star Fox was the SNES's first kind of full proper 3D mm. um, uh, game. Yeah, for But sure. the way to work, going back to what you were saying about the cartridges, it was actually a graphics chip on every cartridge that allowed the SNES to be 3D. So imagine like buying a game today, and with every game you buy, you got an RTX 3090. It's why they cost a pretty penny as well, cartridges back then. Uh, on that, like old car old cartridges and games and stuff, first console then, I'll, probably yours were like Spectrums and Nezes, but what about yourself then? Uh, it was, what was your first? Hmm. Well, this I, first I console. got taken the mess out of uh, for this, a GameCube? <laughs> Okay. I was told that's too modern to be, uh, no, no, to be no, no. retro, but I do. They did have little memory cards yes. in them. What can I say? And I have a, a large GameCube collection at home. My favourite console of all time. It's a beautiful console. It just looks it's, nice. It's so good. But the handle Pretty as well. Fun. Yeah. Portability. Yep. I love that it had a handle on it. <laughs> limited, limited edition. What is it? Uh, Nintendo Club uh, GameCube backpack. I have at home. Very I knew you got that. I was, yeah. Yeah. I was, I've seen. You could store the discs in it yes. as well. Has a handle. Put your GameCube in. I have a uh, limited edition Japanese uh, Metroid Orange GameCube. Wow. Thank you. I'm very cool. That is awesome. Respectfully. Yes. <laughs> Do you want to see? If, I think it's here, a, a secret in Mario Brothers. Please, oh. please. If you hold down, and, on, and if this, if I've, if I've forgotten this, because it's literally, I haven't played this since I was little. If you hold down on this, is it this one? Or oh, I'm gonna be dead embarrassed if it's not. You hold down for ages, and eventually you should fall behind. I think you should have done it by now. I'm at the wrong place. I'm at the wrong place. Hold on. Waddle on over to another Let one. me get, let me just try. <laughs> this waddle. <laughs> it's a, it was such a weird secret. Maybe you have to do this bit. Again, somebody probably knows this better than I'd... Oh, is it here? No. It's something that looks... Right, we're going back. We're going back. Sorry, folks. Well, thank God we can go back. Yeah, I Thanks know. Thanks to the progression of technology, <laughs> Deej is able to find a little secret. <laughs> Maybe it's... Rewind. Oh, no, 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 no. Take it back now, y'all. Well, that was... Uh, I know, that was quite lucky. That was lucky. It's on one of these, you hold down for ages, right? 
you hold down, maybe it's, oh, maybe it's a different level. I might have the wrong <laughs> level. I'm, I don't know about something just, oh yeah. That's because they hit me on the bottom. Uh, That's why, okay. There's a, there is one level, and I'll probably end up commenting on this video myself <laughs> with a link to the right bit, because it's not, maybe it's the next level. Maybe it's the next level. There was a bit where you just hold down on a box, just like Crouch, for ages, and if you hold it for an unreasonable amount of time, you drop behind the game, behind the, the level, and you sort of run behind everything, as if there's no collision, just run behind Ooh. everything, and you get to a secret exit. Yeah, so it's just absolutely, absolutely crazy. Like, but I can't remember where that was. And now people are going to think I've made it up. So I'll have yeah, to fact check myself. Liar. I'll have to start fact check myself. Shall we believe you? Oh, yeah, and that's the most important thing. Shall we, perhaps now, folks, have a jump from 2D Ooh. and throw in an extra D? Let's, let, uh, if, if, if we just get in the right direction, mm. I'm thinking this is a Carmack and Ramirez I venture. Think. I think uh, I think in software we have a better look at the old Doom. So Whoa. let's let, let's load that up and have a nosy. Okay, we're going to dive into Doom then. Ooh. Big fans of Doom here, are, are we? Huge fans. Yeah, man. huge. Fan. Um, I had this um, in when it came out in the nineties. Um, I'm I'm not endorsing anything here. Okay, oh, so no. but it was a pirated version. But this was the nineties. Okay. It was a different time. It was a different time, guys. Okay, lawless. kids. We don't do that with Lawless. We don't do that anymore. Okay. Um, so, yeah, it was spanned, I think, if I remember right, spanned across eight floppy disks. <laughs> so you would then put the first floppy disk in, then you put the last floppy disk in to authenticate the, the, the span, then you put the first floppy disk in again, then the second, then the third, then the fourth, all the way through until it was installed, and then you got Doom. And it was on. Windows 95, I think it was on. We got it on, Oof. and it was just. I remember days where my curtain didn't open, and this is all I played, mm -hmm. and I felt just motion sick. And <laughs> I expected the sky to be red uh, when I opened the curtains, and but it was just incredible. It's quite funny being such a violent game, but it feels like you are playing it in like a bouncy castle or something. Instantly, if you feel, if you see the. His hand, boing, boing, as, boing. as you run around, it's that, isn't it? There's a bit of that, and like the views bobbing. Yeah, yeah. It, it's sort of like you don't get it quite like this anymore. <laughs> but Th they actually, in the level, they they put in um, was it in Doom where they they hidden behind one of the walls? Hmm. Uh, was it? In, I think it was Doom where they hidden one right behind one of the walls. Um, I think it was Romero's head That's on a stake. Yes, and that, that was how you have to, to fight the boss, but it wasn't the boss you were fighting, it was, yeah. I'm sure it was Doom. It's the last, sl it's, I think it's, it's either the, the end of Doom or Doom 2, that is. Is it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, you're 100% right. There's a little secret there. Ooh. Just, just, just yeah. you know, spoiler. Take, that's it, update the wikis. Spoiler for anyone who hasn't played it yet. Uh, so, Hannah, were you saying that you talk about Doom in one year? Well, yeah, so I, because I teach on game art, we talk in terms of, because there's a lot of, Doom games, which mm -hmm. you're probably quite aware of, but uh, there's also the infamous film. Oh, yes, <laughs> I went to the cinema to see said film. Oh, and what did you think? Uh, I, I, I thought long and hard about that film. <laughs> probably for the, too long. The Rock was incredible. Uh huh. Great performance. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we we use it as a kind of um, we have a module, contemporary aesthetics and visual Go structure, ahead. and we did used to have a project that was called Ultra Violence. So we look into super violent games like Doom, and it's kind of amazing to see. Um, with the limited like graphics and everything, mm. how you can still portray yeah. like what is going on where you are um, with so so little detail. And there's also one of the things about it is the fact that you're actually locked to one axis, aren't you? You can't look up and down at all. So if you were trying to shoot someone who's on, say, a balcony, you can just shoot forwards and it'll still hit them. Um, it's one of one of the limitations, um, but it's kind of like almost pseudo 3D. Mm. I'd call it. It's that little first step into it. Um, but there's a lot of cool stuff in terms of like the colours they use and everything, because which are a bit different to games today. Like I think green's dangerous stuff. Yeah. In this, whereas nowadays you'd say, oh, you know, green that'll heal me or something. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so it's quite, it's quite cool. It was a pretty muted palette, wasn't it? Like yeah. Yeah, everything, you know, everything is sort of drab, and, but it works. It worked. It worked really well. It was, but you were limited to the palette then. Mm, well, yeah, Windows 95. What was it? it was two five six colors or something like yeah. that it was 
you went a great deal of colours mm. then, you know. Um, but I bet your mind was boggled when you saw it. I thought you were playing well, in real life. But the thing is, this this is what I've, I've, I've said all the, you know, I've said uh, earlier, as in like, you know, the, the, the gamers today, younger gamers, that they're spoilt with, um, I'm just walking around here, look. Uh, them, they're, they're spoilt almost, you know, we've got 3D graphics, where this, when, when this came out, this was absolutely revolutionary. Uh, Deej, I don't know where I'm going now, mate. I've, I can't I haven't um, played this for years. I looked away for a split second, and you're back at the start. <laughs> 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 right. So, in here. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Here we go, here we go. There let's, we go. Are. let's go for you. Let's go for you. Oh. You'll, f you'll figure this bit out. Oh, yeah. Hey, shotgun. All right, lovely. The, that, what, what you were saying, um, Hannah, about like, the, the, the aiming as well, and we'll find out in a minute when Sean finds something that shoots. I mean, I'm sure that's going to happen in a minute. But like, it's, it, we it, believe. But, like it, it is interesting, isn't it? Like how, like, because this, like you say, it's a three D space. But I think, if memory serves, like the whole game is actually represented entirely flat, entirely flat. Like you know, it, it sort of a code level, level at an engine level. So you can never have anything above something else in this game, can you? Like, I, I, I don't know where I'm going. Right, go to that door. I mean, I'm guessing. This, this one here. Yeah, 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 yeah. How? Yeah, you're pressing open. <laughs> Hey. Oh God, gosh! Oh, 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 oh my days! But like, yeah. So like, in the engine, you, you couldn't. So these stairs, like, they'll never have a room underneath them or an enemy underneath them because it can't actually happen. Like mathematically, everything's on the same, on the same plane. So, you know, it, it's 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 how they created interesting levels, and the levels in Doom are interesting. Like, they're some of my favourite level design for the time. Anyway, it, it, it is amazing. Because you certainly do feel like you're going under things. But yeah, yeah. You never can. No, that's it. You, you can't actually have something directly under something. Obviously, that changed a few years later. I mean, Id went on, so they made Doom 2 after this, didn't they? Ultimate Doom, or Final Doom, excuse me, which was just more levels, essentially. But then it was 1996 when they made Quake. Yeah. And that was, a, that was and I'll, 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 I'll throw to you guys to comment on this as well, but Quake was probably the thing that got me into. Like, I wanted to make games from when I was little. Um, but Quake was actually, you have oh, yeah, had a go. Sorry, yeah. Oh, um, no. yeah, yeah. Yeah, Quake was probably the game that got me into creating games because I modded things for Quake in 1996, mm. made like bots and weapons and enemies, and I loved it. And I was like, I want to do this for the rest of my life. What about yourselves? What got what what old game or what 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 got you into it? I think I think um, I'm just Quake very really quickly. I, I got Quake as part of a. Um, so I press uh, the yeah. rightmost button, open the door. Oh, you've done it. Yeah. So oh. I'm not having another Sean oh. of him yeah. bumping into the door. Is that another? <laughs> oh. Uh, I, I got Quake free with a graphics card that I, from a PC that I bought in 1997, 98, something like that. Right. So that, that got me into I think what got me into like, gaming, I think my, my first console was, what's that console? It was Commodore 64. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, I share a, a cassette deck mm. with my, my cousin. Um, but then the first proper console with cartridge and whatnot was the Master System, Sega Master System, the original one, mm -hmm. the big long one where you could put cards in as well as the cartridges as well. Yeah. Um, so that was the, f the first console. Then it went, I went uh, Mega Drive, I was like NES, um, then it was uh, Mega Drive, Master System, sorry, what was I on about? It? Master System, NES, Mega Drive, SNES. Street Fighter 2 Turbo Pack for the snares. That, that was the that was the one. Nobody can beat me as Ryu. I'm going to see you. Yeah. Uh, my brother's technique um, was to be blanker and just pin me in the corner with a with oh, the, the, the blanker spin. Um, cool. So that was that was great fun. Um, do that. And then we went. What was it then? Oh, my brother got PlayStation One. Mm. Uh, 1994, I think it was. Um, and that was just that was just. Bonkers that yeah, was then. For, the so yeah, you got this kind of here PC gaming. My dad mm. bought us a PC uh, off his friend at work. I think he paid eight hundred quid. He got a hundred mega hard drive. Yeah, um, one hundred twenty eight kilobytes of RAM. What? Two, two, <laughs> two, two speed CD ROM. Yeah. All right. Levels of Command and Conquer used what to take forty five minutes to load. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Um, and then we, d we didn't have another one then until we went into PlayStation 2. Did you at university? Did you sort of do any modding and make stuff for any of these games or like early games? Yeah, on, on the on the PC for modding for like Command and Conquer, Red Alert, things mm. like that. I did that. Um, 
a, not only not a Quake or anything, but definitely for Conan. Conan Conquer has been my my all time favourite game. Uh, you know, um, it's a sort. It's one of those where I think from a nostalgia point of view. Um, I just remember playing Command and Conquer over and over. I love strategy games. I love those kind of those, those type games. But the ability to kind of place, I mean, the ability to, in, to place parts of your uh, base f like further away from other parts of your base mm -hmm. as the games evolved was like revolutionary because you could only place them literally one square Absolutely. next door. And Red, Red Alert allowed you to kind of build sandbags yeah, that and then it. place it and then delete the sandbags yeah. you know what I mean to build yeah. your base but I love I loved that sort of civilization and those sort of games Absolutely. which is incredible um, oh, the collapse oh, big collapse you see that, that I mean, I mean that, that, huh. people who saw the first episode of, the, of Level <laughs> of Detail might very cruelly comment on my ability to play Fortnite <laughs> some esports you're going to see something you you're going to see something <laughs> special now I'm gonna see some. This is this is more my speed. You know, like again, don't have to look up or down. Um, <laughs> There's too many axes to think yeah, about. Yeah, 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 yeah. What about you, Anna? What, what got what got you into making into uh, making, making games. games? I was trying to think because um, I'd say Billy Hatcher. Uh -huh. And if anyone has never played that before, you play as a a little guy who gets transported to this world of like eggs. <laughs> and there's these massive eggs. You find them and you roll them around and you collect fruit and make them massive. And then you hatch them basically okay. Pokemon, kind oh, of. Because then your little monster comes out and then it can help you, you know, mess up some little shadow dudes. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, you were a little guy, you had like a chicken thing on your head as well. But I think that like really initially ignited anything. But when you talk about modding and stuff, because I never did anything no. like that, <laughs> other than, because I used to be really into like um, MMORPGs when I was younger. And there's this one that no one's gonna know. It was called Fiesta Online. And I discovered that I could get the textures out of that game, paint on them, and then like re-import them myself. Obviously, they'd only show up for oh, me. Okay. But then I, I realized suddenly, I was like, gosh, that, that probably was it, actually, having a little mess around with those. Um, Fiesta Online, classic uh, anime style, super low poly MMO. Uh, it, was, uh, it was pretty trashy, honestly. But I had a good time, so that's fine. Spent too much of my money when I was uh, very young. Shouldn't have had a bank account. <laughs> How good, so, well, so could you spend money on that game? Could oh, you? yeah. Well, well, not just subscription, was it like in-app purchases? It was in-app purchases. It was you could buy XP boosts. Uh, I'd, I'd run to game. I'd get my mum to buy me a little game ago pass so I could have a tenner Perfect. on this. I'd get my outspark points or whatever. And then I'd, and I'd go in and you know how loot boxes are a thing now that, you know, there was a big drama about them. Mm. It was the uh, the slot machine, the little, um, what's it, like a, a little capsule, you'd open it and you could get maybe a premium item. What? <laughs> <laughs> I think they've, they've definitely tightened up the laws on those at the moment, but woo. There's There's one thing actually, uh, which I think is just absolutely brilliant and beautiful at the same time, right? Is that obviously back in the day, you had a problem with you're, you know, you're playing Mario. You didn't know how to complete, beat the boss or something like that. You're playing Metroid and you got lost. Okay, I love Metroid. Metroid, we get, I'll get, I didn't memorize the, 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 the maps of Metroid. Mm -hmm. But then you get to a point of Met Metroid where you couldn't figure out how to progress forward, mm -hmm. right? So then what you'd have to do was you would phone the Nintendo helpline or you'd go and get the manual from the game shop, right? And you read it. So I got my daughter, Holly, hi Holly, uh, recently, the um, Minecraft Dungeons book. Mm -hmm. And she's playing Minecraft Dungeons, and she's reading that because like, this is Bosso as well. And she's reading it, and she's trying to okay, that's how it says I need to beat him. And she, and she's referring to like books, and it kind of obviously the subconscious of it is she's working on her, um, her English and yeah. things like that as well. But it's that that it's not just about the game; it's about the reading and applying it to it. And absolutely, that's, I think she's I brilliant. Forgot, I absolutely. forgot that about going in and buying guides yeah. for D games or like RuneScape. You could get like download PDFs and print them off of like how to get yeah. crowns and yeah. things like that and like how to make money in RuneScape and stuff. And gone are the days of magazines with demo discs. Demo on. discs. Oh, that was it. Oh. That was it. Oh. We do miss a demo disc. It's all online. Now. You download your demos. You know what yeah. I mean. So like, yeah, people still have that sort of way of getting into it. Yeah. You have just reminded me. I did actually phone the Nintendo hotline when I was younger because yeah. I couldn't beat the boss of Super Mario Land on the Game Boy, and the guy on the phone was just like. Um, he was like, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm shooting him. And he was like, just keep doing that. <laughs> and that, that, cost, that cost several quid an hour, that did. And, it, it, and it was on hold for ages. Anyway, on that note, <laughs> I think we'll leave it there. We don't, I'm done bad. I'm done bad. That's not bad at all. A few levels in the bag. Yeah, so, yeah. Friend, <laughs> me again. 
you had a go. You, you had your shot. Um, thanks very much for joining us anyway, folks. And thanks to my brilliant guests again, Sean and Hannah. Hope you've enjoyed this episode. And if, as always, please drop us some comments, share this around, um, and we'll see you next time. Thanks very much, gang. See you later. Goodbye. Let's do it. Mate. What? Do it. Do it. There Rock you go. On. Oh, no. I've been surfing. Oh, oh of course. <laughs> <laughs>